Hey, what is up guys and welcome back to another video. Yes, we've talked about motherboards quite a lot and processors over the last few weeks, but we're going back to our roots today with monitors because I've got another Aegon in front of me, uh, the AOC Aegon 241QG. And this is a 24 inch monitor with a 1440p resolution, which means that it's much sharper than your average 24 inch monitors as they usually only use 1080p panels. This one features that 1440p resolution, uh, G-Sync technology and a TN panel with a one millisecond response time. So is this the best 24 inch gaming monitor or should you be looking somewhere else? Well, it all starts with the design of the monitor and the monitor looks really nice. It's part of the Aegon range, which is AOC's premium range of monitors and it genuinely looks really, really good. It's not necessarily the most premium out there on the market, but it does really strike a nice balance between looking good and not being overly expensive, as the likes of Asus ROG monitors are still more expensive, and realistically, people may not notice that much of a difference unless you start stroking your monitor. Bezels are not the slimmest out there, but they're pretty good, and the metallic design of the stand really does look excellent. And the stand is pretty much a slightly mixed bag um, because while it has plenty of adjustments, you can adjust the monitor from left to right, uh, you can tilt it up and down, and then you can even, if you really want to do it, uh, pivot it 90 degrees so that you have your monitor vertically. So in that sense, it's very good, but it doesn't swivel as much as some of its competition does. That's just a limitation of its stand. And the cable management really isn't very good at all, just like the previous Aegon that I tested. Now, being a smaller screen size, I was actually able to get around this issue uh, by feeding the cables up the top through the carry handle and then back down. But this does take up a lot more of your cable, so both your power cable and display port may get stretched if you want to do this, but it is an easier and more clean way of managing your cables. Moving around the back, this is a G-Sync monitor, and as a result, we do have less ports. We have an HDMI um, socket, which I believe is 2.0, but just like the previous Aegon that I tested, you're very unlikely to be able to use this with an Xbox One S and get 4K resolution as it will tell you that it only supports 1080p, or at least to the best of my knowledge. So you're gonna to want to use the DisplayPort really, and this is how you're gonna get the G-Sync technology, and this is also how you're going to be able to access that 165 hertz that this monitor has if you wish to overclock it. You will also find a headphone and microphone jack on the monitor, USB hub, and then on the right hand side of the monitor you've also got a headphone stand, which it doesn't look particularly great, but if you're the sort of person that just wants to literally stick down your headphones whenever you are finished and then put them on whenever you're using your computer, then it probably is actually quite useful. The buttons are located on the underside of the monitor, and these can control the on-screen display and menus of the monitor. And it's slightly different to the previous Aegon that I tested that was part of the FreeSync range. And the menu is different, but it is not necessarily, unfortunately, that much better. It doesn't look very good visually, and the physical buttons, while they're nice and easy to press, you can still press the wrong button quite easily from time to time, which is a little bit of a shame. It's better than the previous one that I tested, but it still can't come close to the likes of Asus, Acer, and LG for monitors. So while most people won't have too much of an issue, you know, AOC, seriously, can you please produce a better, cleaner menu system in the future? As this is a premium range of monitors, I would expect a better menu system from just that. Moving across to the performance side of things and the image quality of the monitor, this is definitely where things get a little bit more interesting because there's two things to talk about. The 1440p resolution on that 24 inch display and then the TN panel. Now the positive, the resolution really does work on a 24 inch monitor and it is that much sharper than a 27 inch monitor. It's not quite 4K sharpness if you've ever used a 27 inch 4K monitor, but it looks really, really good. I mean, I'm genuinely pretty impressed actually. And I was thinking, well, oh, 24 inches is a little bit small, but actually I've had no problems whatsoever, whether it's been video editing or gaming. I mean, it's plenty immersive. It's probably not as immersive as a larger monitor, but I think the real advantage here is if you've got a smaller desk and you want to have two monitors, 
get two 24 inch 1440p monitors and then you can fit them on your desk and if you're the sort of person that doesn't want an ultra wide you want two dedicated monitors on your desk then that may well be a fantastic option for you so pretty impressive there but of course you can get it in 27 inch if you prefer what about the image quality though well, unfortunately it is a TN panel, and as a lot of you know, um, TN panels just aren't simply the best out there for raw image quality, and this monitor is no different. It's pretty good for a TN panel, but it does have a few inherent problems. Main one really being that the images never really pop, and the color accuracy is just not very good at all. Video editing on this and then grading just isn't recommended at all. I've got some presets set up and it is doable, but I can never trust really what I'm seeing on screen. Whenever I have finished editing a video, I'm always a little bit nervous when I watch it back on a different device that it's gonna to look too dark, it's gonna to look too light, or the image um, just isn't quite what I expected it to be. But I'm sure you knew that already. I mean, if you're a professional, you're not looking at this monitor, so it's not gonna affect most people, but it is definitely worth noting. For watching YouTube videos though, it's perfectly acceptable, but again, the lack of that richness that you do get from an IPS panel or the real contrast from a VA panel is, it, it just does take away from the experience. And videos can look a little bit flat and they never sort of wow me in the same way that you can get with other monitors. But again, this is a gaming monitor, so we should be talking about the gaming side of things. This is definitely more geared towards the fast-paced action shooters or just any fast-paced game. And as such, I've been playing some Titanfall 2 and I can't get enough, I really can't. The added resolution of the monitor is pretty flexible because if you don't have the best graphics card out there, you can of course stop it down to 1080p and it doesn't look terrible because uh, it's a 24-inch uh, screen rather than a 27. But if you can drive it at its native resolution and you can crank up the FPS to roughly the 100 hertz sort of mark, then it looks fantastic. And of course you've got that G-Sync panel which keeps everything super, super smooth. And playing off a GTX 1070, I would occasionally drop into the low 60s, uh, which was noticeable. But generally speaking, the game is pretty well optimized and you have a nice smooth curve uh, when it comes to your frame rate, which results in a really nice smooth experience when paired with a G-Sync monitor, and I can guarantee that it's smoother than if you were not using G-Sync. Moving on to two other games um, that really should test the panel, both of them are capped at 90 frames a second. The first one is Call of Duty Infinite Warfare, and it's just not that well optimized, and if you do get extreme jumps from 90 to 60, you're gonna notice them but it does a very good job of keeping everything super smooth um, when the game is behaving properly and I was able to enjoy myself. Then moving across to the final game, it was Batman Arkham Knight, again capped at 90 frames a second, and that was just butter smooth. I mean, flying across Gotham, it, it wow, just wow. I mean, it, it feels so smooth. Yes, you can definitely get better monitors out there for, uh, well, better monitors that do everything. They have better image quality, they have uh, just as fast um, frame rates um, and refresh rates. But if you do want the absolute fastest and most most responsive uh, panel, then this is definitely up there. And some people do value that over everything else, which is pretty much uh, the time for me to draw a conclusion, really. And if you do want that, if you do want a 24-inch monitor with a 1440p response time, and you don't care about the color accuracy, you just want the absolute fastest gaming experience with the smoothest and most responsiveness, then this is a solid choice. But I do ask you whether you actually think you need that or whether you do need that, because I can only offer this monitor the recommended award for a number of reasons. The first one is more just down to the panel type, and we're in the world now coming into HDR monitors with fantastic image quality and fantastic uh, smoothness and responsiveness. I mean, Asus are bringing out, uh, will be ridiculously expensive, but a 4K IPS 144 hertz monitor with HDR. That's the sort of world we're moving towards, and we're not quite there yet, but this is pretty much, it's a little bit reminiscent of the old days where you had to trade in so much for the most smooth and silky uh, gaming experiences. And I can't really fault AOC. I mean, they've done a very good job here. I mean, it looks great, for what it is, it's available at a reasonable price, but price is an important thing because that G-Sync module adds around about 120-ish pounds to the price of the monitor, 
And if I was buying a monitor at that price point, even with an Nvidia card, I would quite happily trade the G-Sync in for a 165 hertz or 144 hertz IPS panel with FreeSync. Yes, I wouldn't be able to use the FreeSync, but it will give me the option of switching to an AMD card later if I wanted to. But more importantly, you still get that fluidity, but you really do get that image quality benefits from the AHVA panel or IPS panels, which means that in every single application you are benefiting. But I'm someone that does a lot with my computer, not just gaming, so please do bear that in mind. And I hope this video has been useful and it's been in depth and it's given you everything you need to know. If not, please let me know down in the comments section below and I'll try and answer everybody's questions. A massive thank you to AOC for providing this monitor for review. A massive thank you to you for watching and to Corsair for sponsoring the channel. Do leave a like if you've enjoyed it, subscribe for more videos, and I will see you in the next video.